How cool is this? But what's going on? Well, it's light simply reflecting and refracting through three circular materials. Hi, my name is Paul and welcome to Physics High. And today I want to demonstrate this wonderful online optics simulation produced by a guy named of Rick2, which is available at GitHub. And I will give you the link to the actual simulation in the description below. Now, this is in one sense a how-to. So in other words, how to use these particular tools to show various aspects of optics, the concepts involving reflection, refraction, and a few other things as well. So hopefully that gives you the ability to either A, use it to teach yourself or B, if you're an educator, to show your students how they could do, let's say, online practice, particularly in the current situation where there's a lot of online education. So stay tuned. So let's start by having a quick look at the window that you have. You have file, which is the opportunity to undo or do, to reset, which is basically clear the slate. And you can also save and open files. In other words, you can save any of the creations that you make here for future reference. The tools are sorted into either light sources or objects that the lights are going to interact with. They are mirrors, uh, transparent materials such as glass, uh, blockers, which is basically just block light. And then you also have things such as rulers and protractors. And then you have how you view the objects. You have just ordinary the light rays. You can extend those light rays. I'll show you that. And also show you a little bit about images and how it's seen by an observer. In other words, what does an observer see in that situation? So let's start off by looking at reflection first. And I'm going to produce three objects for reflection, a straight mirror or a flat mirror, a curved mirror, and then I'm going to show you an idealized one. So I'm going to go to go mirror and I'm going to choose a segment and I'm just going to create a lovely straight surface here. At this stage, we're not going to show any light. I'm also going to produce a concave mirror. In this case, I use, the, I have that option over here. I click and drag. You can see I produce a second point at the other end. And when I let go, I now have the ability to bend the line I have in between here. And where I click it is where it stays. Now, the other end isn't quite uh, at the same level. If I want to move it, I just click and hold and drag and change its position. If I want to move either of these lines, by the way, just click somewhere not on the dots, somewhere along the line and you can move it around. And that's the same, of course, with the flat surface. If I want to change its direction, just click at the end. Now, in the case of changing the direction of my curved mirror, let's say I wanted to point, let's say, in that direction, I'm going to click it roughly so that the two dots that I want at the ends of my mirror are roughly in that direction. And then I can adjust the curvature by just moving that central dot. And then the last one is what we refer to as an idealized curve. In this case, I'm getting a straight line, but it's actually acting like a mirror with a different uh, focal length and I can change its focal length. It won't change the shape of it here, but it'll actually behave differently depending on the focal length. And by the way, you can duplicate any of these objects by just clicking them, pressing the duplicate button, and then you can drag that copy off. So if I click my flat one here, I can duplicate it. When I click and drag, I will produce a second one. In this case, I don't want it. I'm going to just press delete. And by the way, if you selected it and press delete, it just disappears. Now let's have a look at the light sources. There are three we're going to look at. The first is a single light ray. Click and drag and you've got your light ray. Your source is the first red dot and the other red dot just allows you to adjust its angle. The second one is a beam. And again, I can choose click. In this case, I'm going to click and drag. And you can see I produce a whole beam. And the longer I hold my mouse down, the bigger the beam is. And if you move it around, I can change its direction. And there you go. There's my light beam like so. In this case, I have multiple sources. And again, if I want to actually fire it in directly vertical, I just move it to where I want it and click on the ends. And then I can drag it. And now you can see I can have it show the focus. The third one is a point source. And if I click and drag that, you can see I have now got my focus light here. But you can see it's interacting with everything else I have in here. So what I now to choose is a blocker. And I can go click and click and hold and do the same thing on the other one. And as a result, I'm blocking all of those off so I can not interfere between the other diagrams here. Now, what are the benefits of that? Of course, of single light rays, you can just concentrate on measuring the angles. If you click 
and then press extended, you can see that the light rays extend on. Now that doesn't mean that the light necessarily passes straight on, but allows you to maybe work out angles more precisely. So these are all the extensions to these lines. I'm going to turn that off. You can also in change, in this case, our ray intensity, and I can produce more rays and you'll get a lovely patterns like this. You can start to see some more effects going on as well. I'm going to go back down to a lower value because sometimes if you've got lots of reflection and refraction going on and particularly it gets quite complex, it gets a little bit slow in the refresh rate. And even this machine slowed down a couple of times when the images were quite complex. Now, the last thing I want to do is just show you what this particular lens does down here. I'm going to just click and turn that off so it's not distracting. And I'm going to take my ends over here uh, out a little bit and what I want to do is here's my point source and again I want to do is I want to just reduce the intensity to a few light sources like so. I can move my position so I get lovely parallel lines. So actually where my light source is now is actually at the focus of this particular lens. Now it's not curved you say but I can change it by clicking on the line. You'll notice now I have focal length at the top here and I can change its focal length so it actually changes it. So in this case I've got a more curved curved surface down here, I can even change it so that it becomes a convex uh, mirror and so it diverges the light rays out. And again, I can remove my source here and use a beam instead, which will give me the same result. And again, I'll turn it around, move it to where I want it, roughly in the center. You can see there I have a concave mirror and if I move it around, I can make it a convex mirror. Now I've got to make sure I select it first and then do the changing. You can see now I've got a convex mirror. So that's reflection. And of course you can use multiple things. So it bounces on all the different directions. Now let's reset that. And now let's have a look at refraction. So the bending of light as light enters a medium and you know that it bends towards the normal as it enters a denser medium. But at the interface, you will get some reflection depending on a, the actual refractive index of the substance. So let's start off by having a half plane. Now half plane, I don't use much, but in essence, you just cut the whole screen in half with a particular position. So I'm gonna click and drag and here we've go. I have half of my material is a particular refractive index. In this case, it's 1.5. If I change it, you can see it gets whiter. And then of course I can use my light ray and there I've got lovely refraction going on. And of course I can then choose my protractor, click and drag the protractor, grabbing at the edges, I can then place it where I want. If I want to increase the size or decrease the size of my protractor, click in the center and you can change its size like that. And this other little red dot allows you then to turn the actual direction around. So now it's sitting on zero or you can have this particular on zero. Of course, I can also use a ruler if I wanted it to. Similar idea, I don't have a ruler necessary in this situation, but if you click and somewhere in the middle, you can move it around. But of course, if you want to extend it, click at the edges and just stretch it out. And it also allows you to change its direction. If I want to change this, move this, by the way, position, click near the edges and then you just drag it. Now you have the ability to turn it, but I find there's a, there is a little spot somewhere along here that you can actually use to turn it around. But I find it's a little bit fidgety. So what I'd rather do is actually have a particular shape. And in this case, I'm going to produce a number of different shapes and I'll show you how I use them. Let's start off with a circle and I could put a circle over here. Remember, I can drag them at the edges and make them bigger by actually using the center here. I'm going to make a rectangular prism. How do I do that? Well, that's a free shape. And in this case, I'm going to go click into four places. Now that's not perfectly rectangular. If I want to actually change the positions, I can just grab the edges and drag them down. I can, by the way, have a grid to help me get this accurate and also a snap to grid. So that actually snaps into place. So you can be a little bit more precise that way. I'm gonna turn that grid off and that off there. I'm gonna produce a triangular prism. In this case, again, I'll just make sure I've chosen the free shape. 
I click in this case in three places. The snap to grid, by the way, you notice is actually on, so it's actually a little bit easier to make it. It automatically fills the object with some material. And then of course I can have light interacting with that. So let's start with our single light ray. So here's my light ray. I'm gonna click and drag up and you can see my light ray moves through it and refracts at the different interfaces. What you can't see here is there's some reflection going on as well. Um, and it may be easier to see if I turn instead of the beam on. So again, I click my light ray, press delete, and I then want to get my beam and I drag and there's my beam like so. And if I move this at an angle, you might start to see some reflection going on. But of course, it's also interacting with this material. I could use a blocker to block it. I'm going to bend it like this, but I'm going to show you that once you've selected the substance, you can change its refractive index. Again, in this case, I'm increasing it and you can see starting some reflection happening at the surfaces as well. Take my beam over to my other block over here. I'm going to this time fire it at my rectangular prism. You'll see here when I do this in this position, I have lots of things interacting here. I have my refraction going on here, both towards the normal and away from the normal. Then my refraction at this moment, you'll get total internal reflection going on here and coming back. And this little right ray right here is totally internally reflecting in here and then going through there at the other side. And what I can do, of course, is take my blocker and then I can effectively, if I wanted to, just block that off. So it basically avoids that and just cleans this up if you like. You can see I can use a variety of objects here to show total internal reflection as well as ordinary refraction. And again, you can alter the refractive index of the substance to see basically if that has any difference. And in fact, if I lower it particularly, you can see that the critical angle has to be met for total internal reflection to take place. I'm gonna clear this and I'm gonna show you now how we can do lenses. And there's two ways. One's a bit messy and one's a little bit cleaner and I'll show you some other benefits. Now, before I move on though, I just wanna show you one other thing and that is the concept of seen by observer. Seen by the observer is finding where the light comes from, from the source. So I click that, this, is my light source, but the observer sees it here. You can see that it actually doesn't align very well, right? Well, that's because there's refraction going on here. Again, if I show you the, the light rays, you can see this is the path. It appears that the light is coming from down here, and that's exactly what you see from the scene from the observer. If I move this across, you'll see it disappears. In other words, at this junction here, there are no light rays. How do we know? Let's check it out. See, no light rays there. But then, of course, if I move it over here, I'm starting to see light. So in other words, the observer here would see light appearing from over there, but it doesn't mean they know where it's coming from. All this refraction's going on here, but as far as the observer is concerned, the light is coming from that direction. So it's really useful if you want to see what the observer sees. So now let's have a look at lenses. Remember, two ways I said you could use lenses. One is the messy way, and that's using the free shape. I'm going to click and drag, and you can see I'm going to produce a curve that fits nice like this. And I'm going to do click and drag and produce a curve like that. Now it fills it in when I join that up, but you can see that it's not very symmetrical. So I can slightly adjust these here to produce my lens. I can drag at the edges out and just move these dots around the place. So I get a lovely lens shape. I fire my beam of light and you start to see that it actually forms a focal point. Now in this case, that's pretty good lens. I get a really, really nice focal point. You'll see that this doesn't become accurate. So if I move this around, so if I distort the shape a little bit, you'll start to see that the focal point may not necessarily be at the right sp spot. Now it's not, as you can see, it doesn't line up nicely. And that in essence is what happens when lenses aren't perfectly uh, symmetrical, so you get this sort of slightly blurriness as a result uh, in your image. I'm going to actually show you though the concept of image formation, both virtual and real image. But in this case, we don't need this particular lens. I want to actually idealize lens. In this case, I'm going to choose my ideal lens. Now remember, like my mirror, 
I've got a nice line here that actually can be a lens that I can change its focal length for. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to show you, first of all, what happens if I fire my light rays, my beam, and again, a nice beam, you can see I get a focus going through here. In this case, I've got to choose the lens itself and I can change its focal length. And you can see you can move this backwards and forwards. But what I wanna do is I wanna show you the image formation. So I'm gonna take my beam off and I'm gonna make an image by using four point sources. So I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, and I've got roughly a diamond shape here. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the light rays off and I'm gonna look at images. Now all of a sudden you'll see that these dots are over here. Now these dots, the fact that they're yellow tells us that's where the real image is formed. You'll see that if I change the position of my dots, so changes the real image dots as well. If I change the bottom one and make it considerably further away, notice that the top one moves away. So in other words, the image is inverted. Now, what happens if I change the focal length? I hit my lens and I change the focal length and you can see my position changes. So in other words, if my focal length is larger, my real image is further away and actually gets much larger. If I move my lens, that will also affect the position of my real image. And in fact, I can move it right back and now it becomes really, really small. And you can show uh, the eye accommodation that way. But watch what happens when I move it really close. If I move it really, really close, my yellow dots disappear. Now these orange dots appear on the other side. This is now the virtual image. This is like magnification. You can see it's larger, and eventually if it's close enough, they'll align. But notice that they're on the same side as the object, so this is a virtual image. If I change my focal length to a negative value, it now becomes what we know as a concave lens. And in that case, you can see that as I move it further away, my virtual image is actually significantly smaller, which is what you would expect with a concave lens. And you'll notice that I'll always only get orange dots. I cannot move this in any way to produce yellow dots on the other side of the lens. In other words, no real image is formed when you have a concave lens. So this is acting like a concave lens. I wanna just show you two other little things that you may wanna use this, and both of them involve refraction to a degree. The first one is going to be the concept of optic fibers. So how do I produce an optic fiber? Well, I'm gonna choose a free range. I'm gonna click and then I'm gonna drag and produce a nice curve and I'm gonna click and drag. You can play around with it to produce a really good optic fiber. Now again, click and drag, remember gives me the curves or you can just click multiple times and does the same thing. And here is my optic fiber. It fills with a substance, I'm gonna change its refractive index to be reasonably high. Now I'm gonna get a light ray. Remember our tool is the light ray, click in the right direction. And now all of a sudden you can see I'm getting total internal reflection. Now it's interfacing here at the edges. So I just need to adjust this so that I do get total internal reflection of light going in, but I want it to actually come out the other end. And there it is. Okay, so there's optic fiber. And of course you can play around with the edges to make it a bit better than I have. You can see that if my uh, dimensions are incorrect, then I might not get total internal reflection at all. The second one I wanna show you is why a diamond is better than glass. So I can produce a diamond again, I'm gonna choose my free shape and I'm gonna produce a very rough diamond indeed. So here's my diamond shape like so, and I'm gonna move an angle like this and try to make it as symmetrical as possible. And there's my diamond. Now in this case, I'm gonna move my diamond, let me click at the edges and you can drag it down. I'm gonna make the refractive index fairly high. Diamond is actually 2.4. And so there's 2.41, close enough. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my beam of light and I'm gonna fire a beam of light. And you can see I have lots of total internal reflection going on here. Now, what if I change the shape of the diamond? Well, if I change the shape, I'm gonna get more total internal reflection at some points. And so that's what a diamond cutter is all about. They try to cut it in such a way so that the maximum amount of light actually totally internally reflects outwards, which is what you want. And in fact, dispersion takes place as well. So if you have white light going in, you'll actually get the colors of the rainbow coming out. Now in this case, I've still get a lot coming over, let's say at one side. And again, if I play around with it, I can actually try to get as much as possible as light coming out. Again, 
Depends on the angle of the light. If I move at the angle at a certain angle, I might get some better total internal reflection, maybe from the top like so. You know, it's not too bad. Lots of it going here, a lot of it's coming out the side here. I might want to cut it to be a little bit different. And so I get maybe something like this. But let's say now I had the same material, the same cuts, but now glass. So I reduce the refractive index, and now you'll find a lot more light is escaping down the bottom. In other words, it doesn't sparkle the same way. So it's a good way of demonstrating why the refractive index of diamond has a big impact on the quality and the light that hits uh, and in total internal reflects in the diamond. Well, I hope that it's given you a little bit of a guide on how to use this in your classroom, in your learning. Uh, please like, share and subscribe. Put a comment down below if this has been particularly helpful for you. My name is Paul from Physics High. Take care and bye for now.